Zanid O'Connor's body has now been released to her relatives following an autopsy. The music legend who, away from the spotlight, went by the name Shuhada Sadakat, famed for her powerful voice, sadly died aged 56 on July 26 at her home in southeast London after she was found unresponsive. At the time, it was believed her death was not being treated as suspicious. Sunid's body was later taken for an autopsy in order to secure a medical cause of death, but a post-mortem examination report may not be received for some weeks. Shortly after Sunid's tragic death was announced, London Inner South Coroner's Court confirmed that they would make a decision as to whether they will open an inquest after the results of the autopsy are known and following submissions from her relatives. Meanwhile, John Thompson, clerk at the London Inner South District Court, confirmed in a statement on behalf of Senior Coroner Andrew Harris that the conclusion of the autopsy will be publicly disclosed if an inquest is opened. It's believed that Grammy Award-winning O'Connor had been living just off of Brick Lane in East London for just several weeks before she died. Confirming her death, her heartbroken family said, It is with great sadness that we announce the passing of our beloved Sunead. Her family and friends are devastated and have requested privacy at this very difficult time. Sunid died just 18 months following the death of her son Shane, who died age 17 after he left a hospital while on suicide watch. Prior to her death, the musician shared a picture of her beloved son on Twitter and penned, been living as undead night creature since. He was the love of my life, the lamp of my soul. We were one soul in two halves. He was the only person who ever loved me unconditionally. I am lost in the bardo without him. She had been updating fans on her Twitter account about her life and revealed she was planning to create music in the lead up to her passing. Her management team later revealed that she had been putting the finishing touches to a new album, her first studio record in nine years. She was also looking at finalizing upcoming tour dates for 2024 and had been exploring opportunities around a movie of her book. In a statement on their website, 67 Management said, Wonderful plans were afoot at this time. Testament and tribute to those who have put their hearts first for Sunid, to whom we are forever grateful. The star who was catapulted to global stardom with her rendition of Nothing Compares to You was known for being outspoken and never being afraid to hold back. Over the course of her life, Sunid battled several hardships and bravely opened up about the abuse she suffered at the hands of her late mother. In an emotional interview, she revealed her mom didn't want a daughter and would often make Sunid dress similar to a boy and kicked her in her uterus. She disclosed her experience in her song, Fire on Babylon, and since sharing her ordeal has been a strong voice for children who had also been abused. But never being one to refrain from standing up for wrongdoings, Sunid also attracted controversies. Most famously in 1992, she used a performance on Saturday Night Live to protest child abuse, ripping a picture of Pope John Paul II while singing the line, We have confidence in good over evil, holding up a photo of then-Pope John Paul II as she spoke the word evil. She later threw the ripped images of the Pope to the ground and said, Fight the real enemy. Sinead was subsequently blocked from performing on the program, but used her platform to protest against child abuse, which had been committed and also covered by the Catholic Church in England. Discussing Sinead's bold decision following her death, Sir Bob Geldof paid tribute at a gig just days later, saying, She tore up the picture of the Pope because she saw me tear up the picture of John Travolta on top of the Pops. It was a little more extreme than tearing up fucking disco. Tearing up the Vatican is a whole other thing, but more correct, actually. I should have done it. <laughs>